to get at America. And an easy way, quite frankly, is through an EMP attack, an electromagnetic pulse attack. Consider every major city in America, how does it get its water supply? Consider that every major city in America, its average food supply on hand is 21 to 28 days. Consider, where do we get our medication? Consider what happens in nursing homes and hospitals. What happens to our transportation grid? Anything driven that, well, most of them have computers in them. They're all gone. You do in the case of an EMP. Electromagnetic pulse. A burst of radiation that knocks out every electrical system in the country. Impending doom. What you reading, Dad? Ah! Honey, everything's fine. There's nothing to worry about. When things go south, the sheeple will clean out every supermarket in town. Typical sheeple. Ninety percent. Let me repeat that. 90% of all Americans will die within 12 to 18 months after an EMP event. This study was done in 2008. Has anything been done since? No. In our highly connected, just-in-time, efficient technological civilization to cause chaos that could cause tens of millions of Americans to die before it's sorted out. Tens of millions? Tens of millions, because if you have no electric power for six months to a year, you have no food delivery, you have no gasoline, you have no water, uh, you know, you think about that, it's pretty bad. Well, that's a horrifying uh, possibility. How are we protecting against that happening? We're not. <laughs> Today, the old duck and cover films from Cold War days seem campy and quaint. To many, a nuclear blast and its resultant electromagnetic pulse, or EMP, seems so unimaginable, so unlikely, that few worry about it, and fewer still take any precautions. It's not real, uh, and it's something out of a James Bond movie. The general consensus is that it's, it is not a real threat. It's not imminent by any stretch of the imagination. We have uh, inf information, for example, the data from actual high altitude nuclear detonations that were conducted by us and the Russians back in the 1961-62 time, time frame that not, did things like knock the lights out in Hawaii. An EMP is a short burst of electromagnetic energy that all nuclear explosions produce to varying degrees. A large EMP triggered over the United States from an orbiting nuke at the right altitude could fry the circuitry of cell phones, render electronic banking, automobile computers, railways, air traffic control, and airplanes themselves useless. Food would rot in refrigerators and in farm fields with no means of transporting agri-products to population centers. In the following weeks and months, a truly Mad Max world would evolve.
if the worst should happen and an EMP goes off, life is going to be miserable. Miserable for the people who have prepared, and it will be absolutely awful for those who haven't prepared. A lot of people are going to die either by starvation, lack of medical attention, diabetics will die because their medication can't be refrigerated, and people will die because of unpreparedness or just downright evil in people killing to get whatever they need. So there's many factors to prepare for an EMP. I'm just going to talk about a few of them here, and you should do more research than just listen to this video. Now, there's uncontrollable factors like what type of EMP weapon it was or how close it was to where you live or the Earth's magnetic field or geography, all that stuff applies, but you can't control it. So what can you control? Well, things like food. Store food away. There's not going to be any freight coming through. Grocery stores only have what they, what they have out on their shelves. Farms are not going to be able to produce large-scale farms anyway because they have huge machinery that an EMP will take out. Also, cooking. Get a solar oven. Solar ovens work just as well as a normal oven. You can bake bread, cook meat, all kinds of things, and there's all kinds of people online showing how to make them, or you could just buy one already made. Water. Water is crucial. Water is more crucial than food. You have to have water, and it only takes a few days before people get psycho if they don't have water. Okay, now let's get down to the nitty-gritty. We're going to talk about a Faraday cage. If you've never heard of it, it was invented by a man who lived in the 1800s, Michael Faraday. Basically, it protects your electronics from an EMP. There's a lot of people online showing you how to make Faraday cages. If you want to keep a car, some 1980s vehicles, but 1970s and earlier are cars that are resilient to EMP effects. One of the best options, however, is to get a bike and also get a bike trailer. You'll also want to be able to communicate abroad and locally. You can get your hands on an old radio, an old ham radio preferably with the vacuum tubes, and also you want to get some walkie-talkies with rechargeable batteries and a solar-powered battery charger. Keep these in some type of EMP bag or Faraday cage. Print any photos, any files, any documents. You'll also want to consider either getting how-to books or printing off instructions and directions of first aid techniques, survival techniques, cooking recipes, all of that kind of stuff that you just take for granted that you can just Google, but if it goes off, you won't have any of that information. Burn all of your photographs and video files and everything onto CDs and DVDs. And if you have an old computer, put that in a Faraday cage as well, Faraday box, because when the electricity comes back on, you'll have a means to get access to your files 